welcome to a cold Houston review. The HTC One is just a regular phone, right? Wrong. It's the last chance to rewrite the wrongs of High Tech Computer Corporation, or HTC. HTC were once kings, leaders and innovators. They were the first to create a touch and wireless handheld device back in 1998. They were also the first to manufacture an Android phone in 2008 and they made the world's first 4G Android phone in 2010. But things went downhill from there. They lost direction and focus and released way too many phones way too quickly. This confused and annoyed customers in the same stride. Over the past three years, HTC has been struggling against the likes of Samsung and Apple. Many said it was over until the HTC One was announced. Since the HTC One's release, it has been praised with critical acclaim by some of the biggest tech reviewers, as well as regular customers alike. What's all the fuss about? Is the phone really that good? What about some of the problems that we've been hearing about? Could HTC's one last chance be enough to save the company? So now that you have a clearer picture of what this product represents, let's get on with the review. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the HTC One is the build quality. The first thing you'll probably say is, wow, this feels great. It feels slightly heavy for its size, but that's actually a positive point because it makes the phone feel sturdy. It feels very nice to hold in the hand and the back casing has a nice finish. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that HTC has put a lot of time and effort into this design. The 193 gram, 9.3 millimeter thin HTC One features a third generation Snapdragon 600 crate processor clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. This processor powers a full 1080 by 1920 4.7 inch Gorilla Glass 2 screen with a 469 ppi pixel density. Accompanying this is the Adreno 320 GPU with 2 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. There's a 2.1 megapixel camera on the front and a 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera with 2 micrometer pixel size and optical image stabilization on the back. It also has 1080p 30 frames per second video recording and another mode with 720p at 60 frames per second. So what about the screen quality? Well, these days screen density is pretty much maxed out. You can't really get any higher after this generation of phones. It'd really just be a waste of processor resources and less hooked up to an external monitor. The screen is extremely sharp, let me tell you that. That's pretty much the first thing you'll notice about it and what everyone else noticed about it when I showed them the phone. Text, even when zoomed out to the extreme, stays perfectly readable. This screen may just be the best screen I've ever seen, period. The colours are very well balanced and don't really have an overshadowing tinge. Outdoor visibility is great. There's less refraction happening between the screen itself and the glass because the display is so close to the glass surface. Since we're on the topic of hardware, let's talk about the button placement. Normally I wouldn't waste time telling you where the buttons are located, but there's two important things to note on this particular device. The first one would be the power button on the top left hand corner that doubles as an infrared blaster for your television. Now this is pretty interesting to control your TV like that, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm actually talking about the location of the button itself. Because the HTC One is a kind of long and skinny device, it becomes fairly awkward to keep reaching all the way up there to turn on and off your device. I only mention this because there's no other way of waking the phone. You can only wake it using the power button. It's not really a big deal, but it's just worth noting. Likewise, the second hardware thing to note about this device would be the volume button. The volume button is rather flush against the side of the device, so it may be hard to feel in the average pocket. Obviously both of these things are not deal breakers, they're just little nitpicking facts. It's just what I noticed. Another thing you'll notice about this phone is the two front speakers. That's right, two front speakers, so that means stereo. There has been a lot of fuss about these speakers, but I can say I am a fan. We'll get to this a little bit later in the review. Okay, so let's move on to the software. Well, there's a few things to say here. HTC's marketing campaign has pushed two unique software features, Zoe and Blinkfeed. We'll get to both of those shortly. But first, 
the basics. Upon release, the HTC One was powered by Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean with Sense 5.0 UI on top. Sense UI is both loved and hated by many. In my personal opinion, it looks an order of magnitude better than something like Samsung's TouchWiz, but unfortunately it's just not as practical. The first thing that really bugged me was the lack of quick access settings. The word out is that when the HTC One gets upgraded to Android 4.2, the Sense UI 5.1 upgrade should fix this issue. Moving on, one thing that I did find surprisingly cool was Blink Feed. Blink Feed by its simplest description is a scrollable news feed that can be personalised to individual sources. I can definitely see how it can be of no use to some people, but for me personally, I like keeping up to date with different things in the world, and the quick at a glance interface was the cherry on the cake for me. At first, I just pushed Blink Feed out of the way, but then because it was so personalised towards my tastes, I began to see and read stories that caught my eye, and it started to grow on me, and now I like Blink Feed. Well, is it a killer application? Not really. And there are other applications that can do similar things. But having it as stock was a nice touch. If you don't care for Blink Feed or the Sense UI, there's good news. Android is an open operating system, so you can scrap them both if you wish. And that's what I do. Okay, so let's move on to the performance. If you haven't had a chance to play with the HTC One, the first thing you'll notice is its speed. Not only is the animation speed very rapid by default, but the actual time in opening the apps is almost instant. Yes, it even outperforms the S4, even though the CPU is clocked 200 MHz below its Samsung competitor. When I was at the phone store, with both an HTC One and S4 side by side, I noticed this. And I'm not the only one. Curse Forever report. This is the uh, Octa-Core variant. Despite having a faster processor and faster RAM, the Galaxy S4 has a tendency uh, to lag at times. I've been using the HTC One as my daily driver for the past one and a half months, and I'm very happy to announce that this phone is definitely no slouch. And of course, with 2GB of RAM, apps stay open and launch quickly if they've ever gone to sleep. Well, that's great, you may say, but how does this all help me in my everyday life? Well, it adds a bit of satisfaction to user experience. That extra tenth of a second or so of speed, it helps break down the human technology barrier. In other words, when you're trying to do something, the phone gets out of your way so you can freely do whatever you want to do without it feeling like a task or a chore or something like that. Blah blah blah, who cares? Let's move on to something else. Something that really tests performance. Gaming. Let's load up some high intensity games and see how the HTC One, one of the most powerful phones of 2013, handles them. Gaming on the HTC One is largely a pleasant experience. This can be attributed to the most densely packed screen in the entire industry, and also just the raw performance of the phone. The Adreno 320 has roughly twice the power of the Adreno 225 using the HTC One X, and just about every other high-end leading Qualcomm-based smartphone just last year. That's unbelievable. Combine this with the two front-facing stereo speakers, the wait at your next bus stop becomes pretty fun. Some downsides to note would probably be the smaller screen size. Now, small by today's standards, but not in general, so if you're coming from a phone with a bigger screen, you might be a little bit uh, squinty. And the phone gets quite hot because of its all aluminium, or aluminium if you're American, construction. So it's a point to take note of while you're gaming for long periods of time. Let's move on to web browsing. Web browsing is delicious, for lack of a better word. It seems that HTC has devoted some special attention into the way that the web browser moves. When your fingers swipe or scroll, everything seems to move around with exceptional grace. More fluid than anything I've actually seen before. Pages load quickly and the pinch to zoom is extremely responsive. Text reflow is also native to HTC and is also a very nice touch in this case. For me personally, I would have liked a larger screen, but I guess that's just the way the cookie ceases to be a single unit. So, we've learned that performance is great, but when it comes to some implementations of the software, HTC have done some puzzling things, and it turns out it's not all roses for the HTC One. Let's move on to some of the software aspects that I didn't like. First up, multitasking. 
Multitasking I found to be a bit fiddly. Let me show you what I mean. So to start multitasking all you have to do is double tap the home button. It's pretty easy to miss if you're not looking directly at the phone. Anyway, once you do tap the home button twice, you'll be greeted with an interface of 9 of your most recent applications. The thing that annoys me? There's no extra settings here, and the notification bar is out of reach. I find that this slightly fragments the user experience by throwing them out of what they were doing before and sticking them in a black page with little choice. Again, not a deal breaker, but just something I noticed. If you're a subscriber, you know that I've come from the Galaxy Note 2 as my daily driver. Now if there's one thing that I really miss, it's real multitasking. But this is all about the HTC One, so let's leave that for now. I've done the best I could by installing a couple of applications to ease the pain, such as Relaunch and Floating Browser. Okay, so let's move on to the audio section here. HTC have strongly marketed boom sound in relation to the two front-facing speakers. It's the first time this has ever been implemented on a smartphone. It's about time, I think. It's a terrible name, but it has great sound regarding that it's a smartphone speaker. It has more definition than other phones and has an integrated amplifier. You can tell that the algorithm is dynamic. For example, if you're playing a song, you will notice that if you edge past the three quarter volume mark, the bass levels will stay the same and only the high mids and trebles get boosted. I assume this is to avoid bass clipping. So in summary, if you want the optimum sound quality and loudness, leave the volume two notches away from the top. And on that note, if you get the joke, the headphones packaged with the HTC One sound superb. They are far superior to anything packaged with anything ever. The build quality is pretty horrendous, but the sound is great when plugged into anything, not just the HTC One. Here's a small audio excerpt of the Galaxy Note 2 speakers versus the HTC One's boom sound. Cool, so let's move on to the camera. If you're a subscriber, once again you'll know that I've been very extremely unlucky with all the phones that I ever get. So of course this particular unit of the HTC One has a faulty camera. So it does not focus on anything, so unfortunately it's going to be extremely hard for me to review a camera without taking photos. This is probably going to have to be postponed to a separate video. Of the blurry natures that I did see, I did manage to notice that low light performance wasn't actually as good as advertised, but I did notice that the pictures were a bit brighter, but still quite noisy. I'm really sorry guys, um, but HTC Zoe must have to wait, so this one was completely out of my control. <laughs> I can say that the front camera is really good, and you can definitely tell that they've put a wide angle lens on there. Speaking of which, you do actually get a wider field of view with the rear camera as well. Alright, so we're almost there, but let's run through some additional points. Call quality was decent, but unfortunately the volume was a bit on the low end, which was surprising to me, but people said they could hear me loud and clear on the other end. And of course, navigation is a breeze with Google's integrated software. HTC holds true with their great contact integration and good syncing options. There's a pretty decent car mode, and also a kid mode if you want your kids to use your phone. There's a built-in TV guide, and as I mentioned earlier, you can control your TV using this phone. If you wish, you can output your phone wirelessly using the HTC Media Link. HTC has also made it very easy to transfer your content from your old phone to this new HTC One. And some other little clever things that people don't really care to mention most of the time. Like in messaging, you can pinch to zoom to reflow the text to your personal preferences. And you can even search for individual keywords in all of your message threads. I'm also happy to see native mouse support here, but there are a few snags that we should go over. There's no native USB support, which wouldn't matter for most people, but for me that's a bit of an issue. Charging is painfully slow. If you have another charger with a higher output, try using that instead. If you're a musician and find yourself constantly taking quick audio notes for your future reference, the HTC One is a disaster. Audio recording is just terrible. It sounds like a phone from 2003. And the very last thing is the button layout. Now this is my biggest gripe with the HTC One. Someone at HTC has been smoking too much of something and has made a terrible mistake. 
The button layout is really just chaos. It really doesn't make any sense. I can't understand for the life of me why HTC couldn't just go with the normal home button, menu, menu, menu button, and back button. This standard layout would have been fine, but not for HTC this time round. For some reason, they wanted to simplify things, or so they say, by taking away the menu button and putting it on screen. Now, the strange thing about this is the HTC logo actually has a capacitor strip under it. So this means that it's an actual button, but it's just not being utilized. Now, just go figure, I got no idea. And to rub it all in, in some applications you actually lose more screen real estate by having a menu bar at the bottom or wherever on the screen. Now we can just hope that a software update comes along to fix all of this. So it's not the end of the world, but it's still quite annoying, but it doesn't really take that much away from the positive aspects of this phone. Which there are many of. And that, my friends, brings us to the conclusion of this video. What do we make of the HTC One? Leaving the camera out of the equation, we can weigh up the major pros and cons. Let's start with the cons. The button arrangement could have been better. Battery life was okay, it will get you through a full day, but it still could have been better. Charging was quite slow, and there's no removable back for external storage and the like. The pros? Everything else. Build quality and design are arguably the best of any device we've seen to date. Screen clarity and visibility was a great plus. Solid performance all round, not to mention the great speakers. And something I didn't mention, the price. In my region, it was almost $100 cheaper than the Galaxy S4. If you have this phone, you've made a good choice. And if you're in the market for a new phone, I recommend you go out to your nearest dealer and have a play with the HTC One. It's definitely one of the best smartphones of the year, and you really should be considering it. With iOS 7 causing a semi-threat, and the Galaxy S4 causing a stir, has HTC done enough here? I say yes. All my complaints about the phone were all about minute details, and overall, HTC seems to have played their cards right here. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and as usual, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe, and I'll leave you with this.